To understand why we need relationships, we're going to first need to know about a particular kind of database known as the flat file database. A flat file database is like a spreadsheet where you have data stored inside a bunch of rows and inside a bunch of columns where related information lines up in those planes. To give you an example, let's say we'd like to track orders for our cookie company. And here we have an order placed by someone named Laureen Milford, and she's placed one order for 10 boxes of our chocolate chip cookies. So far, so good, as far as tracking information goes. But with any business, we're hoping for repeat business. So if Laureen Milford places another order, here's what that'll look like. Organizing information this way means we're going to have a lot of repeating information. When Laureen Milford calls to place another order, we're going to have to ask her for her name and her address all over again and type that information in again. And retyping information can lead to mistakes, not to mention take up a lot of unnecessary space. And so the flat file database is kind of inefficient and bulky database design. With a relational database, we break up information into various tables. And in this example, we placed all of our customer information into a customer table, all of our orders information into our orders table, and likewise, all of our cookie information into a cookies table. And don't worry about storing that total. That's something that a query can do, and that's another video. But now, how are we going to relate information in these tables? As of right now, they have nothing in common to relate. Well, that's where primary keys and foreign keys come into play. If we add primary keys to every table and then add those fields to our orders table, in other words, create foreign keys, then we'll be able to relate those tables together. So now when we take an order, the only thing we have to type in is the customer's ID number. And then the database will be able to connect that number to all of the information we previously typed into the customer's table for that customer. Same goes for the cookie information. All we have to type when placing an order there is the cookie number and Access will connect that number in the orders table to all the other information stored in the cookies table, thus saving a lot of time and saving a lot of stored space inside the database. So with that said, every relationship, no matter what kind, will have one primary or parent table and one related or child table. And you can usually identify the primary or parent table by its primary key. If a relationship is sprouting off of that primary key, then you know that's your parent table. And the only reason why that's important to know is from a data entry standpoint. Access will not let you enter information in the child table that doesn't match up to information in the parent table. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, you wouldn't want to type in a customer number in the orders table if you don't have that customer's information entered into the customer's table. This way, our information integrity remains solid. Now, in Access, there are several kinds of relationships that can be created. The one-to-one -one relationship is a relationship where the primary record will have only one related record. In this example, we've split employee information into two separate tables and joined that information by the employee number. In both tables, that employee number is designated as the primary key, which means that we won't be allowed to duplicate an employee number in either table, which is good because we don't want two different employees with the same employee number, hence the name one-to-one. -one. The one-to-many relationship is a relationship where the primary record may have many related records. In this example, each customer number is only allowed to appear once in the customer table. Again, because we don't want to assign two different customers the same number. However, in the orders table, the customer number is allowed to repeat. Again, because here we want customers to be able to place more than one order. We want that repeat business, hence the name one-to-many. So here's what that information would look like in a table. We have two different orders from the same customer, and that's the one-to-many relationship, which incidentally is the most common kind of relationship to have in Access. 
Now is where we get a little tricky with the many-to-many -many relationship. In this relationship, many records from one table can be related to many records from another table through the use of what's known as a junction table. And here's why we need this kind of relationship. Let's say we have a situation where an employee is working on several different projects. Likewise, we have a project where several different employees are assigned to it. Well, if we try to relate information this way, that's a one-to-many relationship where we can have an employee working on many projects, but what we can't have is a project with many employees working on it. That's a problem. And if you relate tables the other way, your problem is simply reversed. Now we can have a project assigned to more than one employee, but we can't have an employee working on more than one project. That's also a problem. So what we do to solve this problem is to add a third table to act as a bridge between the first two tables that we want to relate. And that third table is what we call a junction table. And what a junction table is, is a table with a composite key. So here, the combination of the project number and the employee number make up this table's unique identifier. It's also the table, incidentally, where we'd input the information of who is working on what projects. So in Access, this is what a many-to-many -many relationship looks like, which solves the problem I showed you before. And that's relationships in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. For more information 